Hey Dragonfly Swarm, the icy, intimidating, and slightly mysterious new 5-star character has finally been released onto the crazed cryo simps, and Shinha has kind of thrown people for a loop. As a 5-star cryo polearm user, you'd imagine she'd be designed as a god-tier cryo DPS, but weirdly enough, she's actually a niche support that thrives on massively boosting your team's cryo damage via resistance shreds from her burst and flat-out multiplicative damage buffs from her elemental skill. And even though she's actually one of the more complex and niche characters to be released, one who I really wouldn't recommend to newer players, she's able to create massive damage boost for a team when built and played correctly. She doesn't require high investment to see noticeable impact in a team, and she's quite flexible with what teams you run her on so long as she's boosting some amount of cryo damage. So I'ma stop rambling now and jump straight into the guide. Shinho's normal charged and plunging attacks aren't anything special, but she is a support unit so that shouldn't really be a surprise. And beyond that, you don't really want her to take up too much field time at all because her damage boosts only last for so long. So your best bet is to quick swap her and then rotate your team so they can all make use of her icy quills buff. And you might be wondering, what the f*** is an icy quills buff? Honestly, great question. It took me a while to fully understand how Shinha's elemental skill works, so let me explain it the best I can because it is her bread and butter skill as a support. Shinha basically has two elemental skills in one, but both provide similar utility. When you press her elemental skill, she dashes forward, dealing cryo damage and granting all party members five stacks of the icy quills. So with icy quills, every time a character lands cryo damage on an enemy, one stack of icy quills is consumed for that character, and the cryo damage deals increased damage based on Shinha's attack. So basically, Shinha is able to grant all of her party members a few instances of massively increased cryo damage with these icy quills. And you can tell if a character has a stack of icy quills because of this little aura that will surround them if they do. Now, when you hold her elemental skill, Shinha slashes in a large cryo AoE instead of dashing and grants her team seven icy quill stacks rather than just five. Holding the skill makes these icy quills last longer, but it also makes the cooldown of her elemental skill longer as well. As for Shinha's burst, it not only synergizes well with her own kit, but also with other cryo users in the party. Using her burst creates a massive cryo AoE zone that periodically slashes with cryo damage, much like Kazuha's burst. Also, enemies inside of the zone have their cryo resistance shredded by 11% at burst level 6. This grants decent off-field damage from Shinha, as well as providing a means to more damage for cryo carries with the cryo resistance shred. But beyond that, with her first ascension passive, characters standing inside her burst field also gain a 15% cryo damage bonus, Shinha included. This on top of the cryo resistance shred will amount to a huge overall damage increase from a cryo carry such as Ganyu or Ayaka, and also Kazuha's filing a copyright claim for that burst as we speak. Shino's other ascension passive is what turns her elemental skill into basically two different abilities because it grants new effects for when you hold or press the skill. When you press her skill, she now also grants nearby party members 15% increased burst and skill damage for 10 seconds. When she holds the skill, she grants the team 15% normal charged and plunging attack damage for 15 seconds. 15 seconds, not 10. <laughs> this passive alone grants Shinha a ton of flexibility based on what your team needs in the middle of a fight, and it's also like the 89th ability of hers that buffs her team. She does a lot of buffing. Now, there are a few really important things to note about Shinha's abilities that will help you optimize her gameplay. Number one, and most importantly, Shinha does actually grant herself icy quill stacks, meaning you can trigger her icy quills by using her burst, which will make it deal noticeably more damage than when she doesn't have icy quill stacks. Number two, you can easily keep track of the duration of your team's icy quill stacks because they always last for as long as Shinha's elemental school is on cooldown. School? What the f- <laughs> As in, if you press the ability, the quills last for the full 10 second cooldown, and if you held the ability, they last for the full 15 second cooldown. As for Shinha's constellations, as you'd expect with most 5 stars, they do bring a lot of extra value to her kit, but aren't really necessary for her to perform well. I will say though, C1 and C2 are very tempting. At C1, Shinha now has an additional charge of her elemental skill, meaning you can now apply icy quills to your team much more frequently, and you generate energy for Shinha faster as well. It is important to note though that you cannot stack icy quills past the 5 and 7 stack cap by spamming your skill quickly. All that will do is reset the stack quota, but still, the added mid-fight flexibility and particle generation that this constellation gives is pretty sick. At C2, Shinha's burst lasts for 6 seconds longer, which obviously increases her overall damage output, but it also reduces the downtime of her cryo resistance shred to 2 seconds rather than 8, because you can almost always have her burst on the field. On top of all of this, her burst now also grants your team 15% increased cryo crit damage. So C2, just like C1, is opening up her kit even more, granting her more ways of buffing her team and significantly less downtime. At C4, Shinho basically now accumulates stacks every time her team triggers an icy quill stack, and the next time Shinho uses her elemental skill, she consumes all the stacks she accumulated, increasing the damage of her skill.
skill based on the amount of stacks consumed. I'd say this is definitely her weakest constellation, but as far as fourth constellations go, it's still quite strong, and it grants her another use for Icy Quills, which is nice. Now, although C6 is unrealistic for most players, it's still nice dreaming about it, and Shinho's is, it's insane. At C6, when characters trigger Icy Quill stacks using normal or charged attacks, it doesn't consume the Icy Quill stack at all, meaning someone like Ganyu or Attack Ayaka basically now has 100% uptime on the huge damage bonus that comes from these Icy Quills. That is insane. The whole reason Icy Quills have stack limits is because if they didn't, it would be broken, and C6 is exactly that broken. So yeah, overall with her constellations, Shinho sees a lot of value and flexibility from C1 and C2. C4 is a bit underwhelming, but then C6 completely unleashes the potential of her icy quills. The way I just described that was unnecessarily cinematic. <laughs> As for Shinho's best artifact sets, it's a pretty straightforward bet between two options. Your first and most valuable option is the two-piece Shimanawa's two-piece gladiator combo for a total of 36% attack damage boost. With Shinho, stacking attack percent is extremely important because the majority of her kit revolves around her icy quills helping to amplify cryo damage, and the quills do this using Shinha's total attack stat. The higher it is, the more damage you can boost. With this artifact set, you can pretty much run any of Shinha's standard builds given its flexibility with her kit, and right now I'd say it's definitely her best in slot combo just for that flexibility and value alone. But if you're feeling quirky, you can also run the 4 piece Noblesse set, which grants Shinha 20% increased burst damage and a 20% attack damage boost for herself and her entire team when she uses her burst. With this artifact set especially, you're gonna want to focus a lot of energy recharge into Shinha's stats so that she can have her burst up and triggering the Noblesse passive as often as possible, so you'll see more consistent field time from Shinha, but less damage output overall. As for her stats though, it's really straightforward. Shinha works best with an attack percent goblet, circlet, and sans, and for substats you'll focus exclusively on, surprisingly enough, flat attack, attack percent, and energy recharge stats. Shinha doesn't need crit ratios to deal and help her team deal massive damage, so you're much better off stacking her total attack stat as high as possible. Also, energy recharge is important on Shinha because of her high burst cost and considering her burst provides a lot of utility to the cryo team shenanigans. So get some energy recharge and make sure her burst is always ready. As for her best weapons, this is in my opinion where Shinha's building process really shines. One great thing about this homicidal cloud bird apprentice lady is that she makes good use of a lot of the weapons in the game. Obviously her very best in slot is the calamity queller because you know it's uh it's her weapon. It comes with a massive 741 base attack and an additional 16.5% attack sub stat at level 90, granting Shinha a huge amount of total attack. But beyond that, the passive increases all elemental damage by 12% and grants consummation upon using your elemental skill. Consummation grants 3.2% attack per second up to 6 stacks for 20 seconds, and this attack boost is doubled when Shinha isn't on the field. That was a lot. Uh, basically it just makes her icy quills deal unimaginably high damage when you play her as a quick swap support. Now while this is her best weapon and it synergizes perfectly with her kit, you can honestly get away with so many other 5 star weapons on her, such as Engulfing Lightning. Engulfing Lightning is considered Shinha's second best in slot for its high 608 base attack and 55.1% energy recharge stat at level 90, but it also increases the wielder's attack by 28% of their energy recharge, and you gain 30% energy recharge after using your burst. This weapon is so good on her because it literally grants her bonus attack just for building energy recharge, which will boost her damage and keep her burst up consistently. Engulfing Lightning works especially well if you're planning to run 4-piece Noblesse Shinha, but still works amazing on her with the standard build. Some other honorable mention 5 star pole arms, however, are Vortex Vanquisher for its ability to grant a bunch of attack buffs, and Skyward Spine for the energy recharge and very high base attack. Now, Shinha's best 4 star options are a little limited, but there are decent ones among the pool. Firstly, Wavebreaker's Fin is an amazing choice on Shinha for its extremely high 620 base attack and 13.8% extra attack stat at level 90. For a 4 star pole arm, this is a lot of attack, and beyond that, the passive grants bonus burst damage based on the total energy cost of your team's burst, so that's pretty nice extra damage for Shinha as well. There's also the Lithic Spear, however, which grants 565 base attack and 27.6% extra attack at level 90, and with the passive, it increases your attack by 7% and crit rate by 3% for every leeway character in your party. Though the Lithic Spear is a bit hard to obtain since it's a rate up exclusive, it's very good on Shinha and helps her pile up extra attack for her icy quills. The last 4 star that I want to talk about that definitely isn't her best option, but is good if you're out of options, is the Favonius Lance. It has a decent 500 
265 base attack at level 90, but it also grants Shinha a nice 30.6% energy recharge, and every time she lands a critical hit, she has a chance of gaining back a bunch of energy. There aren't many good attack boosting 4 star polearms right now, so if this is your only option, don't feel too bad, because it does have a pretty high base attack and it helps with Shinho's energy management, so at the end of the day, it's not a bad option for her by any means. Moving on to the really weird part of Shinho's building, however, let's talk about team comps. So right now in the current state of Genshin Impact, I definitely wouldn't consider Shinho a must pull because she's quite replaceable in team comps and doesn't really have a dedicated team synergy that works amazingly well, for right now at least. Her main attraction definitely seems to be Mono Cryo, in which you pair her with a Cryo main DPS such as Ayaka or Ganyu, and then a third Cryo user that brings survivability to the team, such as Diona. Then the fourth slot can be another Cryo character or a Shielder or a Crowd Controller. I prefer bringing Kazuha for Crowd Control and Cryo Defense Shred from the Veridescent 4 piece set though. The problem with Mono Cryo right now in Genshin Impact though is that it's not only a pretty high investment team comp because you need Shinha and either Ayaka or Ganyu, but it also lacks a lot of the utility you need to lock down enemies such as Rift Hounds. And Rift Hounds are everywhere in the game right now. Somebody's gotta put a leash on those dogs. But with no hard crowd control and no easy way to chase fast enemies down with high damage, the Mono Cryo team struggles heavily against these fast enemies. Mono Cryo does have its strengths though, because the more Cryo users that are in the party, the more people can make use of Shinha's Icy Quills buff, so when fighting against bosses or rather immobile enemies, this team hits like a truck. Now, Shinha does work pretty well as a substitute for Diona on the Morgana Freeze comp with Ayaka or Ganyu, but I replaced Mona for Kokomi because without Diona, you have absolutely no survivability, so you're losing out on a bit of Mona's damage buffing, but Shinha's damage buffing is similarly powerful on the team. And though you'll have less cryo users to buff with Icy Quills since it's just Shinha and Ayaka, it'll be much easier to secure damage on fast targets such as Rift Hounds because of the perma freeze. Shinha does pair well with other niche picks however, such as with Eula for her ability to shred physical defense and act as a cryo battery for Eula, and nephew Chong Yun since he can infuse the team's attacks with cryo, allowing everyone to make use of Shinha's Icy Quills. But overall with team comps, she's rather unflexible. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> she's not very flexible because she pretty much exclusively works with cryo users and there aren't enough high utility cryo users in the game currently to cover a mono cryo team in the same way you can cover, say, a mono geo team. For example, with Ito's standard mono geo team, he not only has massive AoE damage, great enemy chasing capabilities, powerful shielding options, great sub TPS options, and insane energy circulation, but geo's resonance passive shreds geo defense and boosts geo damage just for having a shield on your character. So comparing Shinha's mono cryo capabilities to that of other mono element teams, it's a little bit underwhelming, especially considering that it seems like Shinha was most closely designed with Mono Cryo in mind. So she's in a kind of weird spot with Team Synergy right now, in which I'd summarize it by saying she hasn't reached her full potential yet. <clears throat> now then, as usual, we're gonna go over a few must-know tips with Shinha so you can become the number one Shinha main globally. Number one, always use your elemental skill on Shinha at the very start of every rotation. Her ability to apply Icy Quills to herself and her team means you're missing out on free damage anytime you deal Cryo damage without having applied her Quills. Number two, prioritize maxing her skill first for the added Icy Quills damage, and then max her burst second, and unless you plan on running Shinha as an on-field character for whatever reason, you won't need to level up her normal attacks at all. And number three, the trickiest one, when you're triggering Shinha's Icy Quills using your main DPS, such as Ayaka or Ganyu, make sure you trigger them with the hardest hitting damage first so as not to waste your limited amount of Quill stacks. What I mean by this is, for example, if you apply seven Quills to Ayaka, consume at least one of those Quills with her elemental skills since its high damage scaling will make the Quills increase its damage by a lot more than if you were to consume a stack with a normal attack. And that's basically all I can think of to help you on your journey to mastering Shinha. Whether you pulled her on purpose or the wish button accidentally slipped and you're now watching this video while crying and regretting your decisions, you are a Shinha haver nonetheless and you gotta build her. So if this video helped you in any way or you liked the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing because it really helps the channel out. Also consider following me on Twitch or joining my Discord server because I love to see you around in my community. Alright, I'm gonna go pretend to be a Shinha main until Yaimiko comes out and steals my heart and my wallet. Bye.